Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part two of the Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark 12 in 148 scale. All right, so let's get ready. So here's the plan. Uh, this will be a step-by-step -step build <clears throat> and I will talk about what I'm doing as I go along. And if there's anything that seems complicated or um, needs modification or uh, causes a problem or whatever, I'll make notes so I can summarize at the end of the whole build. Also, uh, what I plan on doing is in each video in the series, uh, for the first few parts that I remove and assemble, I will actually show how I cut them off, how I clean them up, how I prep them to get them ready for um, assembly and or paint. Uh, but I only do that for the first few, um, first few steps, first few parts, mainly for any beginner video or beginner modelers that are watching. Um, they'll see what I'm doing, and my plan is to explain what I'm doing as I go. So for some of you that watch my videos a lot, uh, it's going to be a lot of the same old, same old. But for anybody that's maybe just getting into the hobby, uh, that's kind of who I'm focusing on. So. Uh, I'm going to make it as easy and clear cut as possible and demonstrate what I'm doing. But after the first few parts, I will do the cutting, cleaning, and prepping off camera unless there's a special note that needs to be brought up um, if I have to do something special in prepping a part or whatever. That way it doesn't get too long and too boring. So let's get cracking. So first parts we need are 85 and 90. Um, I'm sorry, that's the colors. I, it's been, I've only done one Airfix kit and I gotta get used to their methods. So we have A24 and B8. So we got A24, which I'm assuming these parts will be in numerical order to some extent. So the colors I, I'm using is Tamiya, um, cutter it's got a very fine point very fine blade and I like these as opposed to these type of cutters just because I can get a lot cleaner cut and a lot closer to the part for example I can put this right up against the part and trim that off and there's virtually no cleanup involved now on this part there's no um, there's no flash and there are no mold seam lines, so that one's ready to go. So then I need part B8, which is the bulkhead with the instrument panel on it. Now, what I like to do is when I'm cutting these parts off, in general, especially if it's a part that's, that's curved, I will cut it quite a bit away from the edge of the part. That way I can focus on trimming it better and cleaning it without it being on the sprue. So do that there. And that there. And I think I will zoom this in since these parts are kind of small. So we can see what I'm doing. So let's see. All right, so let's see. This part goes Whoops. I need some tweezers for this. Tweezers I use most are the Tamiya, this particular Tamiya tweezer. So it looks like it's number 147. I like it because it's real heavy duty and it grips parts really well. Okay, so that goes there. So I am going to, now normally I use Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. But for this kit, I'm going to use regular Extra Thin because it doesn't evaporate as quick and it's not as hot. 
which means it's not as potent because the plastic on these um, Airfix kits is pretty soft compared to this the others that I use or the other kits that I build and it'll just melt this good if you're not careful okay so there is that I believe that's the compass that's cool all right so we got that and then we have um, part C4 which is clear which is the gun sight so I think on that that part I will be painting separately so I'm not going to install that or get it out just yet Okay, so a quick note about the colors. <clears throat> These are, as I said, Humbrol colors. Um, 85, 90, 33. So I, did, I found a color chart online, and I'm writing down the Humbrol colors here, and then I'm writing the Tamiya equivalent here, or the color it's supposed to be, if it doesn't have an exact Tamiya um, equivalent. So that's what I'm doing there for the colors. And I'll talk about what colors I'm using when I get to them. So we've got this part here. And I'm going to set it aside because I want to paint as much as together as possible. So let's go with um, step three, which is part B26 and B18. B26. All right, so we got B26. B18. This is another place where it's really nice to have nice sharp cutters. Less chances of it putting additional stress on the plastic parts and breaking them. Or sending them flying off into oblivion. So same thing. Cutting as close as possible. Okay, there's a little bit of a burr there, so I'm going to use one of my fine sanding sticks here just to smooth that out a little bit like that and check it for any checked or pin marks which there don't seem to be that looks good On curved surfaces, I like to cut around it like this, and I just cut it flat. That way I don't flatten off the round surface or curved surface. Now, there doesn't seem to be any mold seam line, so we're good to go there. So I can go ahead and glue this into place. Okay, and... I want to make sure that I'm gluing it on the right side. So in the instructions, you got the two holes that these two pins go in. And there's two square indentations there, but not there. So I need to make sure that I glue it properly. Okay, now on parts like this that come all the way through, I like to glue them from behind that way piece of well that's a cat ear nice like 
hat. That way it doesn't mar the finish on the front. So that looks good there. So that's ready to go. So that takes care of step three. Step four, part number A3, glues into that sub-assembly that I just did. So A3, which looks like the rudder pedals. And that is right here. Trim that off there and there, and then looking at the instructions, that whole little bit there needs to come off. Good, and then these side pieces here. Like that, so that's ready to go. And we got a little bit of mold seam line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my knife to scrape that smooth. And what I do is I lay it sideways, angle it away from the direction that I'm going to be scraping it so I don't gouge the plastic. It's not taking much. There's not very much of a like that. So then this Got a little bit of a burr here from the sprue gate where it was attached. Gonna buzz that off of there. through there easily so I need to look that a little closer see if there is a mold seam line I'm just not seeing on the inside check the outside again See how that works. No, so need to figure something else out. Okay, got to figure it out. So it was a really super tight fit. So all I did was I took my hobby knife, or you could use a drill bit, put it in the hole, gently turn it a little bit just to scrape just a little bit on both holes, and checked it. And it wouldn't fit so I did it again just a little bit more didn't want to get too much and then it's going through so then I can just slide it all the way up and those two little notches I mentioned earlier these two pieces here fit there so you want to make sure those fit as well I'm gonna use my tweezers here to help push it into place
just like that. Splendid. Okay, so that's good. So we'll just get a little bit of glue. There and there. And then a little bit there and there. Oops. Make sure it's all bottomed out. So there's that. Okay, so that takes care of step four. Then step five. parts together and the way it fits there's a little tab on the end of this part sticking up through the bottom that fits into that part there now in looking at that that is not going to fit because the hole is molded at an angle because of the molding process so I'm gonna to have to trim that out a little bit Let's see if that fits Scrape a little bit of this off. See the way these things are molded so they'll push out of the mold. The parts are kind of tapered. So they'll pop out of the mold easily. So it's a matter of squaring it up. So instead of it being an angle, Okay, that fits. But before I glue that on there, I want to make sure that nothing weird is going to happen when I get this mounted to the fuselage. So, I'm going to look ahead in the instructions here and see how all this is supposed to mount. In order to test that, I'm going to have to check it on the fuselage here. So it's part 16. So this right here is the side that it's going to be mounted on. So let's see where it's supposed to go. Okay, this part fits here. And then this part there's a little notch right there where that fits. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. So I can either glue this now or do it later. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it now. But the trick is to make sure that's nice and square. That is a very, very small contact point there where that 
supposed to be glued together. So. It's got to be square this way. And vertically. So I think, I think that'll work there. This one's kind of kind of delicate. Oh man! Wow, this one's not. There we go. That one wasn't cooperating. That should be good. We'll find out later whenever we put it in the... in the fuselage. For good reel, that is glued. I really want to make sure it's even that way. Alright, that looks pretty good. So I can set that aside to dry does have a little bit of flex to it in case it, it needs it whenever it actually gets installed. Alright, next up is the um, seat and the seat back which is A5 and B21. Same thing on this one. Cut that as close as possible. That one will need a little bit of sanding. Let's get out one of my bigger sanding sticks here. My 400 grit and finny stick. Being careful to maintain the curve. isn't even going to be seen once the cockpit's all buttoned up. There's a big um, ejector pin mark there. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be putting the pilot, so I'm not concerned about that. Otherwise, I'd have to sand and file that out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna square these edges off. Make sure they're nice and flat. Okay. So the seat has a little channel there that fits that raised mark there.
Okay, so we got that. Then we need A41. Which is some kind of lever. It looks like an e-brake on a car. But somehow I don't think it's an e-brake for a plane. Okay, that has a little bit of a mold seam line there. So I'm not going to worry about the bottom because you're not going to see it. I'm just going to concentrate on the upper. Part, whoops. Okay, and then this, there's a little tic-tac shaped raised portion there that fits in a similar indentation there. So, <clears throat> bit of a mold seam line right there that I'm going to take care of. It'll just make it easier. glue that in position just like that okay got that then we need this rear bulkhead here which is a2 After I clean this one up, I'm going to stop doing the cleanup on video. You're, you get the idea. This will be the last piece for this video. good so the orientation is this points back and the seat whoops so this raised portion here it's in this piece here just like that okay so I'm gonna hold that position there using my to me extra thin touch it on the edge let capillary action draw the cement into the seam into the join Voila. That is that. So then on the back side of this, we need parts A25 and A4. So A25. It's right here. And A4, which is this piece here. Alright, 
so this piece here goes the rectangular shaped hole there rectangular peg there and there are two sides this side here faces this way so put that in place and what's cool about these tweezers is they're so heavy duty you can use them to really mash a place home or a piece home so it fits really good like that splendid all right then this piece here this piece here fits in that slot there theoretically see we got another case where this is molded not completely rectangularly that's a word so I need to square these edges off fits like that and then there's like kind of a flat piece here that rests up against the back of this bulkhead and you got to make sure that this part faces this side this direction That looks pretty good. Then we have part A45, which I'm thinking is an oxygen bottle. But I don't know for sure. It's just kind of what it looks like. And I think it is painted yellow in the instructions. No, 85. 85 is black, so I don't think that's an oxygen bottle. I don't know what that is. I just don't know much, do I? Okay, there's a bit of mold seam line to take care of. All right, and there's like a little nozzle on there that faces forward. Let's hope this fits. Okay, I'm starting to notice a trend here. Most of these parts that fit inside like this are not fitting without trimming and a bit of work. Not a big deal, but it's something to take note of. So from now on, before I glue all these pieces together like this, I'm going to test fit all the parts 
and make sure they fit. There we go. Perfect. And again, since that hole goes all the way through, I'm going to glue it from the back side. go all right that takes care of step 10 step 11 part a one which is this piece here okay so this part's ready to glue in now this is directional there are some looks like simulated lightning holes right there those face back And it fits like this. No, not bad. So these two little pins here fit in those notches there. And this just rests up against that. Just like that. So I'm going to glue these here first Something else to note, you'll want to be careful when putting this bulkhead on here because it can be installed backwards if you're not careful. And it'll shift it cockeyed and it won't fit like it's supposed to because it's supposed to fit like this. If you don't do it right, this part here will be slanted over to one side. You don't want that. So, that concludes steps 1 through 11, the assembly of the cockpit sub-assemblies. So, in the next video, when we come back for part 3, um, I'll do the painting on this. And then, if that doesn't take too long... Then I can move on to step 12, which is working on the cockpit side panels in the fuselage. So, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And if you have any questions or comments, or like I said earlier, any experience with this particular kit, I'd appreciate it if you'd chime in and let me know what you know. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.